Oh my god, I have such great news to share with you guys. These Hoya propagations are growing like crazy. Hi friends, welcome back to Botanical Golden. I'm Christine. I am so excited to share the development of these Hoya propagations with you. Um, I am blown away how quickly these guys rooted. So I got it about three weeks ago. I popped these baby up after maybe the same day, I think, um, when I got them. And after a week of having it in the setup, and I'll talk about my setup in a minute. It started rooting. This Hoya Genevieve started rooting and I was just like, oh my God, that is crazy. Like that's super fast. And I know it happens, but it just, it's never happened to me. <laughs> About the setup, I have it in my propagation box. It has a heat mat under it, and I also have an artificial light right above it that is on from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. So the jar is, I believe, um, some salsa that I ate a while ago. Tostito, tur Tostito brand. Tostitos. Tost Tostitos brand. Um, and this is a three-inch net pot. The water, when I filled it, I only had it touching the bottom of the net pot. I haven't had to obviously water it. I have um, tried to watch out to see if it would dry up too much on top, uh, but it seems to be fine. Might have sprayed it once or twice. Of the four cuttings that are in this jar, two of them have started growing new growth points, which is really impressive since it's only been three weeks. And in addition to that, they were traveling in a box before. So they kind of hit the ground running. This was kind of an experiment for me as well, because historically um, I would propagate a lot of my Hoyas more like this. So with no net pot and just a jar with LECA, um, that's how I would, that's how I did it previously but I've been having some problems with my Hoyas um, that are grown this way. I've been noticing a bit of root rot. And because of that, I started doing some research and realized that having the net pot is really beneficial because it's allowing the space to get more airflow and having the water just at the bottom just helps also retain the moisture. Whereas when I was growing it uh, more like this, I stopped putting a reserve at the bottom because I started to notice the plants were getting root rot from it. And it could be because of the, you know, someone on the, one of the Facebook groups called it the yo-yo, which is describing like the extreme dry with the extreme wet because you add the reservoir back in. And I think that that was what my plants were suffering from. Because of that, I was looking into the cracking method. And what really led me there was because I wanted to understand the history of semi-hydro, like where did it come from? And if you look there, you'll find that it's actually also called passive hydro. And under passive hydro, you'll find a lot more information. The cracking method is a passive hydro method that is used in gardening all the time. So the idea is basically to have your water reservoir down at the bottom, not necessarily a third. Um, they actually tell you just to put it right at the bottom of, uh, of the net pot. But also the setup allows a lot of airflow to be on top. So it's the best combination, like roots love air and they need their moisture. So the roots that end up touching the water or developing in water, they become water roots is basically what I understand. Um, but I've noticed that having it set up like this it keeps it moist up top, even though it's dry. So it's living in a humid environment and then it gets moisture uh, whenever it needs. If you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Have it growing.